So in this episode, I share some of the many things that I'm thankful for because it's Thanksgiving. So happy Thanksgiving from me and my family to you and your family. Thank you for listening. Welcome to the Bank of Life podcast. I'm your host, James Nethery, and I appreciate you being here. I'm very thankful for you, the listener. As a matter of fact, happy Thanksgiving. This is our Thanksgiving episode and uh, very appreciative for you listening. Thank you. You know, and I, I, and I must say that, um, you know, all my life I have been a student. Um, I've been a student of my faith. I've been a student of history, and I've been a student of my profession for a very long time, a little over 32 years, and I have uh, been a student of economics. So I've always had an interest in economics, not formally until later, you know, in my life. And and the reason I, I say that is, number one, it's true, but it 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 leads me into the in the spirit of thankfulness you know i'm very thankful that that we can even have a faith or a belief in this country today without being in jeopardy of losing a life right have the freedom to believe in and embrace a faith, right? And practice a faith, practice a religion. I think that's a big deal. You know as well as I do some parts of the world that you, you believe a certain way that um, might not be good for your long-term health, right? Or if you don't believe a certain way, you know, um, could not be good for you. So I'm very thankful that we have the ability in America today to to have a faith and to be able to practice a faith, whether it's like yours or different from yours. I think that's a big deal. And then, you know, just been interested in history my whole life. I know when I was a very young child, my mother, and when we grew up, you know, less than kind of, we grew up somewhat uh, lower middle class, right? An economic uh, level. But when I was a child, my mother, my entertainment, and it was a lot for a single mother to uh, purchase my entertainment was the Encyclopedia Britannica. I know you younger people may not know what that even is. You can buy it all on digital. This was a set of books, right? Through the alphabet, A through Z. And then every year there'd be an update. And it was, everything was in the Encyclopedia Britannica set. That was a the uh, brand that I preferred anyway on weekends and every chance I had out, that's what my entertainment was going through, you know, the encyclopedia Britannica said, so I've always been a student of history. I've always wanted to know, I've always suffered from FOMO, you know, not knowing, and that's gotten better over the years, but I'm a student of history. And one thing I've learned, and I learned this primarily when I met Nelson Nash about, that was about 19 years ago when I met him and, uh, you know, he said, James, you know, behind every economic event or every historical event, there's an economic backing to that. There's something to do with economics behind. And you think about that. Every great historical event, there's something behind that that's rooted in economics. And I found that to be true. You may or you may not, but I have found that to be absolutely true. And then too, I've also discovered that the history that I have studied the majority of my life is not necessarily true. You know, Napoleon once said, history is nothing more than lies agreed upon, right? Well, okay. And then of course, the victor gets to write the history, right? So there's an element of uh, untruths, or an incomplete story that's presented in history. And I'm thankful that I have the ability to study history as deep as I want to study. Now, I'm not saying it's easy and because it's not, but you know, I'm thankful that we still have the ability to access the information that we have access to. Okay. I'm very, very thankful of that. And then I'm um, of course, you know, in my profession, I want to be good at what I do because we serve people and we serve people when it comes to their money and economics, personal economics at the you and me level for more than one generation. So it's very important for me 
to be proficient at what I do so I can provide a good service, a, a meaningful result for our clients and their future prodigy. It's very important. So, and, and quite frankly, you know, I'm a, I'm a life insurance agent, so probably half the listeners just left right there and vio candias and god bless you the uh, life insurance industry is a very noble profession in my opinion it's it's not something that uh i mean i understand that most people's uh understanding of life insurance is based on someone else's misunderstanding so there's a lot of misconceptions that go on in the financial world especially when it comes to life insurance and then i know the life insurance agent you know is uh is disparaged in the financial world. Okay, God bless them. It's I have found that uh, life insurance is a very noble profession, and it has unbelievable results for the people who participate in life insurance. In America, I'm talking about in, in America, in North, uh, North America. Um, so I'm very thankful of the ability to study my profession for the benefit of my clients and my family too. There's no question. My family, I personally benefit from uh, my profession and I hope that you're very profitable in what you do for a living and what you put your hand to as well. And then I'm very appreciative of, to the extent in which we actually practice free economics free markets and you know as well as i do the markets are not free i don't believe that there's a single market on the face of the earth that's not manipulated okay but in spite of all of that you know in america we have the ability to to enjoy economics commerce between private individuals and i, I mean i i I love that. You know, this is the greatest country that's ever been put together, in my opinion, on the face of the earth, as flawed as it is. And economics is nothing more but the exchange between private individuals of goods and services and even ideas. And so I love that. I love everything economics, even the ability to compare the different schools of thought, Austrian economics, you know, Keynesian economics, the uh, Chicago School, and all of these uh different schools of economic thought in the history of economics. Very, very interesting. So I'm just thankful that I live in America today and have the ability to practice and live as freely as I do and all that that entails. So, you know, of course, I'm thankful for my family there's no question about that. My relationship with God is I understand him. Um, and I'm pretty narrow, you know, in my, I, I want to say opinions. I mean, I do not want to be religious at all um, or preachy. But, you know, I'm just thankful that I have the ability to to practice my faith and have the ability to to uh, study that, of course. And then, like I said, I'm appreciative of my family. I'm appreciative of you, the listener. I'm appreciative of our clients that we have. I'm appreciative of our team members. And I spoke on them. I mentioned them earlier. You know, they care. They're here for a reason because they understand what we're doing. They understand who our clients are. They understand that uh, the difference that can be made in our clients' lives and, and and they care. That's a big deal. You know, they care. I had a great conversation with Connor, one of the AV ninjas before uh, the cameras came on. And we kind of went into, uh, you know, this particular episode, Thanksgiving episode. And he cares like the rest of them. So very thankful for them. Thank you, Connor, for, you know, getting uh, deep into conversation. It was very helpful. And then, you know, I'm. I'm very appreciative that we get to practice capitalism. You know, even though the markets are not all free, they're not, they're not, you know, and I'm not, I'm not talking about crony capitalism. I'm not talking about mercantilism. And you know, when they change the words, they try to change the meaning. So I'm not talking about old school mercantilism, current modern day, the same thing as crony capitalism. No, no. I'm talking about capitalism exchange between 
private individuals, right? As free as as much of the free market as we get to enjoy today, I'm very thankful of that. Capitalism, if you think of capitalism, yes, profits, of course, but capitalism provides goods and services to those who have need or desire. And man, when you think about all of the benefits that capitalism has provided throughout history, it's a big deal. So you should learn about capitalism, in my opinion. You should learn about all of these things. Why is James Nether even talking about all this besides just Thanksgiving? Um, because it means something. Can it can it can mean something mean, meaningful to you and your family? Uh, my opinion. All right, so. Of course, you know, with the infinite banking concept, this is the banking with life uh, channel. Um, you know, we, I promote the idea that you can become your own banker. You can control the banking function at the you and me level as taught by our Nelson Nash, who's a great friend of mine and mentor for about uh, had the privilege of being a student of his directly for well, I met him in a I think 2004, right? So here it is, 2023. He graduated in 2019. So about 15, 16 years, right? I had the ability and the privilege to work with him um, as a student, right? I tried to be his water boy, right? Um, and I learned as much as I possibly could from him. If you met him, you understand what I'm talking about. If you had never had the opportunity to meet him, you know, you don't necessarily can't understand to the level that I'm, passionate speaking about but you do have the opportunity to learn about him right and you can do that by you know reading his book becoming your own banker and uh, his first book his second book building your warehouse of wealth there's a lot of videos out on the internet the nelson nash institute has some videos available with him and i know that there's a lot of uh things out there on the big you know, social media world, the big wide world, they talk about Nelson and they never knew Nelson. And, you know, they bastardized his work and, you know, they can mention his name or IBC. I'm not talking about them. I'm talking about going straight to the source. Okay. And uh, learn about him. I think that you'll be glad that you did. You know, I'm, I'm very thankful that I met him because being a student of history, economics, and my profession, he made a great impact on me. And he really closed the loop for my, for me personally when it comes to economics, right? And of course, he was a Christian man, finest Southern gentleman, he, the epitome of a Southern gentleman, right? I just listened to him, listened to his accent, and, um, and he's sincere, you know, when he would do his presentations. And really, he would, when I met him, he was about 71 or two years of age, traveling the country, working harder than most 40 year olds. Um, and when you, and I've said it many times before, and if you participated or you attended one of his seminars, you would, you will know exactly what I mean when I say, if you were, had the privilege of attending one of his seminars, you felt like he was talking to you, right? And he really was, even though there's a room full of, you know, 50, 25, hundred people, you know, you made the connection with him just in, incredible, right? But he always, we had a lot of conversations, um, and we would, I say always regularly, you know, we'd have a conversation after, after the event and what I, so if I back up a little, when I met Nelson, you know, I, I changed everything in my life, what I was doing financially, the life insurance that I owned and presented. And, um, of course I did other things. I'm more than just a life insurance agent. You know, I'm an investment advisor. I'm an investment advisor representative. And, you know, I've done a lot of things. I'm a husband, a brother, a father, a son, a cousin, an uncle, a nephew. I'm much more than just a life insurance agent, but I'm very proud to be a life insurance agent. Make no bones about that. So, um, whenever, whenever I met Nelson, right. And, and he was presenting, working harder than most 40 year olds across the country. He was presenting a 10 hour seminar, right. Which was really his book going through his book. Plus there's always additional, uh, anecdotes and stories and analogies that are not in his book. It was, it was an incredible experience, but there was always a meeting after the meeting, right. Uh, cause 
um, you know, people would have the conversation after the meeting. You know, if you go to a big event, it's, it's that way. It's no different than any other event. Um, and Nelson and I had many conversations because when I met him, met him, and you know, like I said, I tried to be his water boy. We would host him between one and three times a year. You know, he's from Birmingham, Alabama. I live in Fort Worth, Texas, or south of Fort Worth, Texas. And so I would do events um, all in Houston. You know, even uh, Oklahoma, but Texas, and and he would come in and do his event and we'd invite the general public and the clients to come but i had the privilege of you know picking him up at the airport putting getting him to the hotel being his water boy chauffeuring him around you know driving across country here uh you know like between here and houston or I, he'd been out in the field with me to different events and so there's a lot of conversation and my whole point here is there's the meeting after the meeting you know and he kind of got some of that from his mentor leonard e reed that's another name that you should look up and be familiar with i know that there's one video maybe the same video twice available on youtube but leonard e reed wrote many books and leonard e reed was a mentor of nelson nash's and so i don't mean to go on and on but uh i like to talk okay so nelson would say they're after the event you know most people, there are an awful lot of the time, people put on events to to entertain the audience. And some of the audience goes to the events to be entertained. So there's an element of entertaining that goes on in events. Um, but then there's always a, a, a certain amount of people that really go for the knowledge and the education, right? And I believe that's you. And especially if you're 15 minutes into a conversation about life insurance on the Bank of Life channel, it is you, right? And there is always a conversation after the conversation, right? The individuals that, 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 that would engage with Nelson afterwards. And, you know, from Leonard E. Reed, you know, Nelson, in, in our conversation, he would say that, you know, you, you go this big production to even host an event. And to, to travel and to go and to present. And then the conversations after a lot of, a lot of times the whole event was worth that one connection after the event or the two or three connections after the event, because those people didn't come to be entertained. You know, they really became, they came to learn and they had burning passions and desires. And, um, so it was interesting is all I'm saying. And, and I believe that the people that, the, the listeners to this channel, whom I'm very thankful for, are made up of that. Uh, that's just the way they're made, right? They want to learn the truth. And I'm very thankful for you, the listener, and our clients that have, in spite of all of the noise that exists in the big wide world, that have suffered my slow pace in conversation and my lack of flashy presentations, you know, on the whiteboard or, you know, big calculator systems, which I've done plenty of those and, and I'm not above them, you know, I mean, I can do them and will do them, but they haven't occurred on this banking with life podcast i'm appreciative of you suffering through all that digging for the truth looking for the truth and staying past the noise and really diving deep into what is the infinite banking concept and how can i apply it and why does it even matter right to you and to me why why would it even matter to our family but you i'm thankful for you the one, the seeker of the truth, the one that wants to know the truth about the infinite banking concept. I'm very appreciative of you, all right? Um, it's, you know, I think that that's a big deal because there is so much going on in the big wide world, in the financial world, about the infinite banking concept. You know, and the idea that you can even practice the infinite banking concept. I mean, I'm very thankful that I was exposed to that idea after 14 years in the in the life insurance industry and the financial as a financial professional. You know, I've been a registered representative in the past. I'm an investment advisor, um, and 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 I believe that I am a seeker of the truth, 
right? I, I mean, I have I'm, I'm driven to learn, right? And and then also driven by this FOMO, fear of missing out, not knowing. Um, so I'm very thankful that I discovered the infinite banking concept after 14 years of being in the life insurance business. Million dollar roundtable producer, very uh, at least moderate, moderately successful, right? To to, to have discovered the infinite banking concept, all of the pieces come together for me and it ties in with history and philosophy and my faith, economics at the you and me level, because that's where it matters. You know, at the you and me level, Keynesian economics wouldn't even matter if it didn't affect us at the you and me level. Why are prices continually going up? Why are the governments around the world spending money like a drunken sailor? You know, they, because it's not theirs. There's, it benefits them. Right. And, and there's a lot of other reasons, too. They're most of them are corrupt, in my opinion. They could all do us a favor if they just go home and quit. All right. But it wouldn't matter. A school of thought of economic thought wouldn't matter to the average all American individual unless it affected them. And it, and it does, in fact, affect us. So therefore, it does, in fact, matter to us or should matter to us. So then if it does matter to us because it's affecting us in a positive or negative way, then we should learn about it, right? In my opinion, I'm just saying. So the idea that that the infinite banking concept actually gives you, the individual, the ability to create, or not create, but control the bank, the banking function. It gives you the, the ability to create a bank, quote unquote, a bank, which is nothing more than an aggregate of any one thing. And if I float down a river, there's a pile of dirt on both sides. What do you call that? It's a bank, a river bank. I married a beautiful girl from West Des Moines, Iowa. It snows unmercifully up there in the wintertime. And when it does, all that snow can pile up beside a house or a barn. What do you call that? Snow drift? Yeah. How about a snow bank? Yeah, a snow bank. It's an aggregate of any one thing. Right? Well, what is a, a bank? A bank is a movement of money. Right? Well, the capital stock of a bank is money. It's an aggregate of money. So you got to have a pile of money or create, formate, a, a, you know, a pile of money. And then you can practice banking, right? And banking is nothing but the movement of money. So this infinite banking concept, you know, infinite, it's not finite, it's infinite. Okay. And, and beautiful. Banking, the movement of money, and concept, abstract idea. So to control the banking function at the you and me level with the infinite banking concept, I was extremely excited to uh, get exposed to that. And I want to expose you to that. And, and I want you to be exposed to my wish for you is to be exposed for you to be exposed in in the in the true spirit of Nelson Nash. I'm not talking about the clickbaity universal life and all of the things out there go to the source right and find out discover what it means for you what it could mean for you and your family beyond the marketing right setting that aside going to the source becoming your own banker the book 92 pages big print lots of illustrations easy to read it's so simple sometimes it'll come it'll confuse an academic i've seen it i've experienced it why? Because it's so simple, simply written, right? As in, so my encouragement for you is to be exposed to the idea of the infinite banking concept as taught by R. Nelson Nash and discover what it could do for you and your family. What controlling the banking function at the you and me level, right? I'm just telling you, I'm personally, uh, it's changed my life. It's changed my family's life. And it's changed the life of many, many, many clients and their family. You know, it, it's uh, for more than one generation. You know, we have clients that are operating in the third and fourth generation. If they continue and they will, then we're going to touch. They will touch. They will affect the fifth and sixth generation. And that's powerful. Anyway, so those are just some of the things that I'm thankful for. And I'm very thankful for you, the listener. I know you got to step over a bunch of stuff that's not worth listening to to find the truth. And I believe that's exactly what you find here when it comes to the infinite banking concept. So thanks for listening. Please continue.
Thank you for joining us on the Banking with Life podcast. If you're watching on YouTube, make sure to like and subscribe and click on that little notification bell. Otherwise, join us on Apple Podcasts and Stitcher for weekly content.